Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining the webinar tonight. Um, my name is Kate McKenzie from AHDB and really happy to introduce you to Dr. Gordy Jones, who's over with us for a week. Um, Gordy has been doing a series of sessions for us up and down the country. And this evening we're doing a specialist webinar in relation to um, dry cows for better fresh cows. So this is going to go into a little bit more technical detail on a particular aspect. The webinar this evening is going to be recorded and it will be on YouTube. Um, so for anybody that um, that hasn't that isn't able to see it. And so if there are any questions, what we'll do is um, feel free to type questions um, in your uh, boxes on the right hand side. If it's something in particular that we need to come to for that slide, then we'll answer them as best as we can going along. But um, it might be better if we take questions at the end altogether so that we can go into a little bit more detail um, and we will have plenty of time for questions and answers as well. So, um, so if that's okay. So what I'll do now is um, we'll get going. Um, I'll pass you on to Gordy and, um, and thank you very much for joining. Hi, I'm Dr. Gordy Jones. I'm thrilled to be back in Britain. I want to thank AHDB for inviting me. Uh, this is one more opportunity to uh, advance the dairy industry, uh, which has been uh, part of my uh, goal since I was a baby vet a long time ago. So uh, if I can make fresh cows better by feeding dry cows, in fact, if I only had one ration to feed, if I were only allowed to feed one ration on your herd, I'd want to feed the dry cow ration because the dry cow ration starts the lactation. And anybody can do a great milk cow ration. It's the dry cow rations we need to do better. So uh, we're gonna move on. This is the Goldilocks dry cow diet. It was developed a long time ago, but just recently became in vogue for people. All right, we're gonna see and get the slides. This is my home dairy. This is Central Sands dairy. This is the front end of the dairy. Um, and it's just there for a slide to take up. Really, the Goldilocks dry cow diet is a, a dry cow program. It's an, a new look at an old way to feed cows. Honestly, an old way to feed cows. In the world, across all of the world, there's been a failure of the transition period. We can't get good fresh cows. They seem to have a problem. So now I'm telling you whether we have one calf, two calves like this picture, twins, triplets, it doesn't matter. We can get good, fresh, aggressive, hungry milk cows. So it's a matter of too little or too much. Oftentimes we've been giving too much. A few times we've been giving too little. So some of our diets, how do we get it just right? Some of our diets had too much, too many fat cows too much weight loss in the dry cow pen, too much time in the dry cow pen. Think about the dry cow who spends 100 days dry. Too much energy in these rations, too many lactations. Maybe we kept that cow one time too many. Too many calves, twins, triplets, too much grain, uh, too much overcrowding. How about too little? Sometimes our cows are too thin. Sometimes our cows have too little time in the dry cow pen. I'm gonna tell you before the end of today, I need 42 days in the dry cow pen, six weeks. Too little selenium, too little cow comfort, too little dry matter intake, too little fiber, uh, and I spelled it wrong for you people. Uh, too little protein, how about magnesium? Cows down with grass tetany because too little magnesium. So here, too much, too little. You'll have a copy of this slide so you can keep going. So rations that work. Now this is really about milk cow rations, but it's about all rations. How do I make a ration work? The center of everything is the ration. Up in the left corner, it has to be consistent and routine. Up in the right corner, I have to have high quality feed stuff. Down in the bottom left corner, people have to do their job and they have to perform every day. I have to have cow comfort and then the ration works for the cows. Rations that work better for me at Central Sands, these will be milk cow rations for right now. They would be greater than 50% forage, reminding ourselves that she's a ruminant. Also, I have to have no more than four kilos dry matter from feeds that have a 40% NDF that are not forage. 
think of distillers grains, think of brewers grains, think of cottonseed. Those are feeds that don't have effective fiber. They have fiber in them, but they don't have effective fiber. I have to have butter fat above 375 for Holsteins, above 46 for Jerseys. I will feed rumensin in America. You can't. Let's move on. So across the world, that's what makes my milk cows work. Now to make fresh cows, that's what this is about. I needed a, at least a slide in here to tell you about that fresh cow ration. Across the world, there's been a failure of our transition period really a failure of great fresh cows. So what have we tried? We've tried most things that are downstream. I used to send a note out to my dairyman about the little village that was downstream. The little village downstream doesn't remember when the first bodies appeared in the river, but they tried to save them. So they got a boat. They made a lot of boats. They started to watch the river. They made a watchtower. They were now watching the river, rowing the boats, pulling people ashore. They trained medical people. And before the, the village was done, they now had towers with lights, with trained people. They were pulling it out. They had a whole first aid station that became a hospital. And they were proud that 99% of the people in the river that were drowning were now saved. Nobody in the river downstream asked what was happening upstream. Somebody went upstream to the national park, put a guardrail in, and now there were no bodies in the river. In the little village downstream, the watchtower went out of work, the boats went out of work, the hospital went out of work. And then at the bottom of that note, I would ask my dairyman, is your herd working upstream or downstream? And we do a great job downstream. We need to go upstream. So dry cow, fresh cow programs, what have we tried? We've tried close up, steam up. We've tried to steam up this cow before she freshens. We've tried 10 day programs to find the river, the bodies in the river. We've tried drenching programs. If I have vets listening out there, each one has a drench formula they like, and they want to drench fresh cows. Uh, we have calcium boluses. Thanks to some of the industry, we've now defined hypocalcemia subclinically. So not only down cows, but half of our other cows. So we found out we have to give them calcium boluses. We've done ketosis testing, BHB testing. We've done short dry cow periods because it was obvious dry cow periods didn't work. We've done no dry cow periods. I've heard people that said, we'll just feed them the milk cow ration, leave them out there the whole time. We've done multiple milkings. I've been asked, maybe we can milk the fresh cow multiple times. That'll help get them started. I've even heard of once a day milking. The guys in Quebec presented a paper at World Bouillatrics that talked about once a day milking. And I went, what are you talking about? And they said, well, milk is energy. Pulling the milk out of the cow causes ketosis. I said, well, then why don't you just not milk her? They said, that's stupid. I said, so is once a day milking. Don't do this. So what are we going to do? This is a fresh cow area. The Goldilocks dry cow program. How do we get better fresh cows? Cow comfort is first, second, and third. Lower the energy. Make high fiber. I need the cow to eat her energy. In fact, it's not a low energy diet. It's just the right energy. Okay, refer to Jim Drakeley at the University of Illinois and Tom Overton at Cornell. These people are now doing the science of this dry cow diet. Twisted stomachs. It seems in the U.S., dairy industry, most nutritionists will have a goal to have somewhere between 4 to 6% DAs. They think achieving that is very good. A few DAs, a few will have a goal of under 1%. Well, you can get well under 1% DAs. Here's a dairy in uh, Indiana. It had 3,200 calvings. The circle now was 15 DAs in a year. 15 DAs in a year divided by 3,200 calvings is 0 0.046. That's less than one half of 1%. They're freshening three to 500 cows with one DA. I only talk about DAs. I don't talk about metritis, ketosis. I don't talk about RPs because your definition and my definition of those problems might be different. But when we talk about displaced abomasums, our definitions are the same. They either are twisted or not twisted. So that is the canary in the cage. That's the indicator. I look at DAs in these rations. How about time in the dry cow pen? What happens to a cow who spends 150 days in a dry cow pen in England? That's almost a death sentence. 
she gets fat, she gets ketosis, and uh, she does impression well. I'm about to show you a herd. I have to explain what happened to this herd. This herd bought cows, a lot of cows, 600 cows from more than 16 hours away. And these cows traveled to the dairy. When they traveled 16 hours by bus, they went through Chicago, they had to dodge a few bullets, they stopped at the, down at the river, down at the lake, and they finally got to the dairy. Well, when they got to the dairy, think of yourself, you're two months away from freshening, two months away from dry off. You're a cow that is two months from drying off. You've just taken a 16 hour bus ride without food, water, and you're not happy. They get on the wheel, they get on the rotary, and they go, try and get milk from me. They had to be dried up early. So they will spend 100, 120, 160 days dry. Let's see what happened to those cows. On this graph, on the vertical axis, is first milk. Think of it as just a first milk projection. It's first milk. Along the horizontal axis is days dry from 70 to 180. So we're looking at cows, the red squares, each square is a cow, and we're looking at cows that did 180 days dry, six months. We're looking at cows that did 180 days or 100 days in the dry cow pen. And the relationship between days dry and first milk is zero, zero. There is no relationship. These cows freshen fine. It wasn't the death sentence it's supposed to be because they were on the Goldilocks diet. Think about that. We can now go in there a longer period of time. I wanna show you all the cows on this herd. This was a 4,000 cow herd. So there's all the cows. So the dry cow period at this dairy was between 40 and 65 days. But all of those tail end cows sticking out to 240 days were the cows out of Ohio on a bus ride. Now look if we can, if we can look at the cows in the lower right hand corner. Those are the cows that had less than 40 days dry. Those cows have low milk and no correspondingly cows above them. Okay, how did those cows come to have such short dry cow periods? There's probably three reasons on a large dairy. The first reason would be abortion and they would have low milk. The second reason would be bad calving dates. Our uh, veterinarian didn't give us the right date. Might have been me, the vet, so I've got to be careful on that. And thirdly, it might have been cows who, for a week or two, avoided capture. That is, they held their foot over their ear tag and wouldn't let anybody see their number, and they didn't get dried off on the right day. They would go through, missed on dry day, next week we'll catch them, and they missed two or three weeks. Anyway, we don't want cows to have less than 42 days dry, or we end up in that box. Okay, too much, I did this. Too much body weight, too much energy, too many calves. We've done this. The thing that kills us, I've gotta get the red up, is the too much energy. Okay, dry cow period guidelines. I need six weeks, 42 days. Shorter periods will decrease your profit. I can do one group, two groups. In fact, even in the large herds today, I'm feeding one ration, one group. I only move them to the close-up group, same diet, to have them separated to be able to be found. But if your herd is 100 cows, I can do it with one group. You don't need two groups. You don't need two rations. We can do it with one. So we'll separate a pen to calf three weeks before calving. We'll make a close-up group. If you can't, in a small herd, I'm fine. General guidelines for this ration. Number one, more, no more than four kilos dry matter of starch silage, whether it's, uh, you call it whole crop, barley silage, or corn silage. Once I have no more than four kilos dry matter corn silage, I will put in three to four kilos of dry straw. We don't need eight kilos of dry straw, but eight kilos will work. It's not a race to see who gets the most straw, it's a race to see who gets the best diet. All the grain she needs will come from the corn silage. I don't want you to add, or the whole crop, or the barley, the barleyage. I don't need you to add starch. No sorting. Probably this will be said 20 times through this. Sorting is, will destroy this ration. 
any time a dry cow sorts, you know, if I have 20 cows and they're sorting, I now have 20 nutritionists. I want me to be the nutritionist. Okay, if it fails and we've done it right, lower the energy. Let me repeat that. If you follow all the guidelines today and we still fail, as long as they're not sorting, we may have to lower the energy. Now, these don't all add up above the 12 kilos. The average intake is going to be 12 to 14 kilos of dry matter. The rest of the ration is going to be what you have on hand. My preference is that it be old hay, dry hay, it be uh, marsh hay, it be something else to help fill them up, but it still has to be balanced into the ration. Okay, dry matter intake with low energy, high fiber, dry cow diet with the Goldilocks. Far off cows are gonna eat 12 to 14 kilos. Close up cows are gonna eat 11 to 13 kilos of dry matter. If I take, and I'm gonna deal in mega cows, you guys deal in mega joules. 1.32 mega cows equals 8.88 mega joules per kilo of metabolizable energy. Let me say that again so those of you taking notes. My 1.32 megacals per kilo, NEL, equals 8.8 .8 megajoules per kilo, ME. All right, that's the last time I'll say megajoule. So my dry cow diet will have 1.32 megacals. If I multiply those megacals by 12 and a half kilos of dry matter, I get 16 and a half megacals. The NRC in the US for dry cows says our dry cows need 14 and a half. We're giving the dry cow all the energy she needs to 12 kilos. Relax, it's not a low energy diet, it's just the right diet. Okay, dry matter intake, we've done this. The ration is gonna be 100% forage, or nearly, other than the protein. So the NDF, the neutral detergent fiber of the ration is 50%. It's 100% forage, okay? If she eats 12 kilos of dry matter at 50% NDF, her rumen is filled with five, six kilos. I've got six kilos of space occupying fiber. Think of that big thing as a, a, a bucket, a, a drum. That drum, that bucket is now filled with six kilos of NDF, okay? It's also 16 and a half megacals. I'm gonna take you to my milk cow ration. My milk cow rations, the cows are eating 23 kilos. Those milk cows have a 26% NDFF, which is NDF from forage. So now my milk cows eating 23 kilos have a six kilo NDF rumen. What does that mean? It means my dry cows and my milk cows have the same size rumen. They're filled with the same amount of fiber. They're both eating different amounts, but the space taking up rumen mat is six kilos of NDF. That's hugely important. I wanna teach your dry cow to eat those six kilos. If your dry cow eats those six kilos, your milk cow can eat those six kilos. That means I can get a better intake in your fresh cow. Okay, look at this. Vertical axis is dry matter intake. Horizontal axis is start off at dry, close up, and fresh. So the cow goes along, it takes a few days for her to regulate her energy in that dry cow diet. She's now eating 13 kilos. Life is good. You move her to the close up ration. Some people put energy, more energy in that close up. They steam it up. And now the intake looks like 11 kilos. And then she freshens. So now we have a, what we think, this is the fairy tale we tell ourselves. Cows go along steady, we move them down to 11 kilos and they freshen. If that happened, I'd be happy. That doesn't happen. Those diets that add a little bit of energy to the close up going, well, she needs a little more energy. I just talked with a dairyman today here in England and he changed the diet to the close up to add a little energy. And here's what he did, when he changed that energy, the first three days, she went up in intake. Okay, she went up to 14 kilos. We've added grain. Think of grain as sand. We've added sand to all that straw. 
Well, the cow is eating the same amount of straw until she feels full. So not only have we increased the energy density of the dry cow diet, the cow ate the same amount of straw, the same amount of diet, but, but there was grain in it. So it weighed more. Her dry matter intake went up and her energy density went up. So now if I put in the 11 kilos of average, the cow's not at 11. She was at 14 with her higher intake, and she's at 8 kilos just before she freshens. What does that mean on an 8-kilo cow? It means at 50% NDF, she's going to have a 4-kilo rumen. She's going to have a smaller rumen. It's going to take less space to fill up. And that's what you've gotten this cow used to, and now you've freshened her. So you get the red line. Well, that's what happens. If I do it and I keep the same energy, I can get the green line. Now look at the difference between the red line and the green line post-fresh. One of the drug companies has taught us that cows get subclinical calcemia. One of the drug companies has taught us that we can give them boluses of calcium. They've done a wonderful job explaining that oral calcium prevents milk fever. Look at the green line. Which cow's eating more calcium, the red cow or the green cow? The green cow is. I've got that cow now eating more of your ration. If she's eating more of your ration, she's eating more of your calcium. And guess what? You just treated her for subclinical ketosis or subclinical milk fever. So this is the Gordy Jones fairy tale. We're not sure I'm right. But the guys at Guelph, at the University of Guelph, Ontario, are now putting cows in Kalen Gates, and they say, Gordy, we're two years away from showing you're exactly right. We've got the data, we're gonna publish the paper, and you're dead set on. Uh, so science will follow us. And if you're on that green line, it means your cows are fresh and quicker. There's less DAs, there's less ketosis, there's less milk fever, and now she cleans up quicker, her uterus is ready to breed quicker, and you have a cow who took off. You get greater peak milks, and in about 90 days from now, if you've tried this diet, you get more better fresh milk. Let's look at fresh cow starts. We're gonna look at a large herd in the US. Okay, this is a confusing graph. On the right side of the graph is first projection. I mean the left side. On the left side of the graph is first projection. That's first milk. Along the horizontal axis is days since fresh. The red dot, the red squares are first calf heifers, the green squares are second calves, and the yellow are mature cows. And now what you're looking at, go way to the right. Way to the right, 300 days in milk. We have asked every cow who's 300 days in milk, tell us what your first milk was. So you're looking at 300 days of first milks. Some of the cows have only had a first milk, the ones on the far left. The ones on the far right, have had 10 testings. They've been 10 months fresh, but their first milk is now on this graph. I hope that helps you understand. Now look at the graph and ask yourself, what do you see? If I put this line in and this line in, it gets easier to see. For the last eight months, no cow was above that red line for first milk. I changed the dry cow diet, bam, the fresh cows go up in milk. I feel like Emeril Lagasse, the, the chef. Bam! Fresh cows go up. They go up because they ate more. Why did they eat more? We taught them to eat more. We taught them to eat a rumen of six kilos of NDF. We taught them to eat more as dry cows. Now when they're a fresh cow, they ate more. Okay, here's another thing. Look at this graph. This is a dairy comp. This is 3,961 fresh needs. This is two, three years ago, January 15th. This dairyman freshens 3,900 cows. In this herd of 4,000 freshenings, he had almost 900 ketosis. This guy, every week, two times a week, bled his cows for ketosis. Watch that yellow line to the right of my lower circle, the lower circle that's now flashing. If we go to the right of that, the guy had 119 ketosis. He had 92 ketosis. He had 34 ketosis, then he had four, then he had zero. In the first, it was the first of February, six weeks before that, 
he switched his dry cow diet. When the cows freshened off the Goldilocks diet, he tested 381 cows in April and had four ketosis. He tested 333 cows on May 15th and had zero ketosis. At $5 a test, in June, he tested zero cows. He's done testing cows. He now once a month monitors them to see if we got it right. Go up that line to line 32, just two squares above the flashing red light. If I go to there, he had 81 LDAs. 80 LDAs and 4,000 calvings is 2%. 2% DAs isn't bad. But watch that second line. He had 18, 12, and 12. So out of 300 average calvings, he'd have 18, 12, and 12 DAs. The next two months after the Goldilocks diet, he had one DA each month. One DA out of 381 calvings. One DA out of 333. How would you like to have a herd of 300 cows that has one twist a year? A lot easier to handle. Okay, there's my ketosis. There's my DAs. I wasn't sure I had these red dots in there. And there's the DAs. So the Goldilocks diet not only stops metabolic problems, but it gets a better intake and stops and gets better fresh milks. Okay, what's the specifications of this diet? What's it look like? Pretty easy to do, 11 to 13 kilos a day. I need crude protein. We're gonna stop talking about it, but it's gonna be somewhere between 13 to 14, 15%. Protein, I need 1200 grams of metabolizable protein, especially in the fall. Uh, in the spring, we might get away with 1000 grams, but right now I wanna set this bar. I need 1200 grams of metabolizable protein. I need an NEL to be 1.32 megacals per kilo, 8.88 megajoules per kilo. Last time I'm saying 8.88 megajoules. 1.32 megacals. So now you got the energy, you got the protein, and you got the dry matter. The NDF is going to be about 50%. The forget that, we don't care. The NFC is going to be under 30. It's going to be less than 26. NFC is non-fiber carbohydrates. It's a, a, a proxy for starch. Our starches are gonna be 10, 12, 13%. So you're gonna have a low starch dry cow diet. The NDF from 4-H will be exactly the same as my milk cows. We're gonna teach your dry cows to eat five and a half to six kilos of NDF. Once their rumen's that big, when they freshen, they'll eat that much. Okay, what's it look like mineral-wise? I won't add any phosphorus. Even if it's low, I add zero phosphorus to this diet. No phosphorus added. Calciums. Now, this is mine. If your nutritionist wants to do something else with the minerals of this diet, I'm okay with that. If he wants to do something else with the protein and the, and the fiber, the energy, I'm not okay with that. you got to listen to me. But we can do anionic salts. We can do uh, high calciums, low calciums. We can do what your nutritionist wants. I happen to use high calcium. I need magnesium to be above 0.36. And if your feeds are high in potassium, I will be a lot higher. So we will keep potassium as low as possible. We will have magnesium to potassium ratios of one, one to four. So if your potassium is 1.6, 16, I need magnesium at 40.4. If you happen to be, it's one to four. I'm not gonna do the math, you do the math. Whatever your potassium is, I need to raise the magnesium. My magnesium is magox and mag sulfate, and you can use mag chloride. I use half magox, half mag sulfate. Okay, that's it. NDF, six kilos, at least 1,000 grams of metabolizable protein. Last slide, I told you 1,200. So troubleshooting these diets, I need bulky 4-H's, adequate, effective NDF. Your cows need exercise. I want them to have a well-bedded pack or, or cubicle. Great water and a bunk space of 75 centimeters per head. Look out for high-grain rations. They'll make acidosis in your dry cows. Low protein, 
will get you low cholesterol. Excessive soluble protein will waste energy while she excretes the protein. Low quality proteins, all of those will make bad cholesterol. Low magnesium levels will make down cows that never get up again. Let me say that again. If your magnesium gets under the one to four with potassium, you're gonna have grass tetany, hypomagnesiumism, and they're not gonna get, the vet will treat them, you'll treat them, and they won't get up. When people add phosphorus to these rations, any phosphorus, they make milk fever. Too much energy. So common pitfalls, the number one problem is sorting. Some of the problems are unpalatable, poor quality forages. You can't feed them the moldy crap just because you're trying to lower the energy. Molds, mycotoxins can be a problem. Excessive potassium not balanced with magnesium is a problem. Not doing a wet chemical min mineral analysis to know what you got can be a problem. No TMR delivery gets harder to do this, but it can be done. Overcrowding can be a problem. So on my dairy across the U.S., when they join my club, they have to buy one of these. This is a rotor grind mixer for the straw. The straw has to be two inches. It has to be five centimeters, narrower than her mouth. It has to look, look at my old phone. I had forgot about that devil. I've got a message waiting. Uh, look at the phone. That's how good the ration has to look. The ration has to be that short. It has to be short enough that she can't sort it. Because if she can sort it, she'll pick out the M&Ms. Dry cow management is the single most important phase of production. If I only had one ration to feed on your herd, I'd want the dry cow ration. I can feed anybody's milk cow ration and make milk. I can't feed anybody's dry cow ration. You've got to feed this ration to get great fresh cows. And that finished us up in 40, 35 minutes. Not too bad. So uh, we'll look on the chart, see where the questions are, and go from there. Great. Thank you very much, Gordy. Really appreciate your time. Um, thanks, everybody, for joining this evening. Like I say, all of the um, the webinar will be available on, um, on the AHDB YouTube site, and the slides will also be sent to you as a PDF. And during 2018, we've got a whole host of other technical webinars coming up as well. So, um, so keep your eyes peeled about what we've got coming up. And thank you very much.